Greetings, MPhil students. Are you ready to tackle ANOVA procedures? In this video, we're going to guide you through the process of writing the null and alternative hypotheses for ANOVA procedures and show you how to test the claim that treatments are significantly different from one another. We won't just be using any data, but data from an experiment, and we'll even show you how to prepare an ANOVA table with manual calculations. Whether you're new to the concept or just need a refresher, we've got you covered. ANOVA for any number of treatments with equal replication. So, let's get started. A pot experiment was conducted using a completely randomized design to evaluate the effects of three fertilizer formulations, A, B, and C, on the yield of corn. Each treatment is repeated four times. The yields are listed below. Use the data below and a 5% significance level to construct the ANOVA table. What are your conclusions from the ANOVA? Step 1. Write the hypotheses to be tested. We need to start by stating our claim that one of the fertilizer formulations is significantly different from the other two. Our null hypothesis is then that all three means are equal, and the alternate hypothesis is that at least one of the means is different. To prove this, we'll use data from an experiment. We can then analyze this data to see if at least one of the fertilizer formulations is indeed significantly different from the others. The null and alternate hypotheses for ANOVA procedures are always the same. In this case, we're looking at three treatments A, B, and C and our claim is that at least one of the means is significantly different from the others. Step 2. Calculate the correction factor. Now we're ready to do the data step for the problem. This step involves calculating something called the correction factor. To get this factor, we need to add all the values in the table, which we'll call y, and then square that total and divide it by the total sample size. The fastest way to get that is by adding the column totals together 123 plus 149 plus 172 gives us 444. We then need to square that number and divide by 12 as there are three columns with four values in each, which gives us 16,482.0. So, the correction factor is done. Step 3. Calculate the total SS. To calculate the sum of squares total, or the total variation in the sample, all we have to do is take each value from the table, square it, add them up and subtract off the correction factor. Just enter in each number on calculator and square it before adding them all together and subtracting off the correction factor. That will give us a measure of the total variation. 23 squared plus 42 squared plus 47 squared plus 36 squared plus 26 squared plus 43 squared plus 31 squared plus 47 squared plus 43 squared plus 33 squared plus 34 squared plus 39 squared right even though it's easy to do conceptually it takes a lot of time so I've actually done it for us already and I'll give us that answer. Now if we subtract off the correction factor from above 17108. We get the answer 680 okay, so there is our sum of squares total. Step 4. Calculate the treatment SS, TRT SS. Once you have the value, the next step is to calculate the sum of squares for treatments, also known as the treatment effect. To do this, we take each treatment total, A, square it and divide by the number of values in column A. 
Then add to that the treatment total B squared divided by the number of values in column B. Finally, we do the same for treatment C squared divided by the number of values in column C and subtract off our correction factor to give us our sum of squares for treatments. All right, let's do this together. We'll take each total 123, 149 and 172, square them, then divide by the number of values we had to 4. So that's 123 squared divided by 4 plus 149 squared divided by 4 plus 172 squared divided by 4. 16,728.5 minus correction factor, which is 16,428.0. The answer is 300.5. This is our treatment sum of squares. Step 5. Calculate the error SS. The formula for calculating the error SS is total SS minus treatment SS. Subtract 300.5 from 680 and we get our error SS 379.5. Alright, let's talk about the logic we need to finish this data step. Our goal is to calculate error SS and to do that we'll use total SS and subtract treatment SS. That will give us the answer we need. The reason this works is because our model is saying that all the variation in these numbers comes from two sources, differences between the treatments, fertilizer sources, and all the other differences we haven't accounted for, like instrumental, procedural, human, plant variability, soil variations, and or environmental. These errors can be either random or systematic. We haven't taken into account the stuff that could make a difference in the corn yield that's going to be part of the error. It's like the unknown factor, it also includes the stuff we don't know could affect the response, which is corn yield, in this case. So with the fertilizer formulations and these two things combined, we get our total variation in the sample. To get our final answer, we subtract off the treatment effect from the total. That's how we get what's due to error. It's time-consuming and tough to calculate this way, so it's easier to use these two numbers to get this one. That's why we do everything in this order. Now let's finish up, just subtract treatment SS from total SS and we get 379.5, okay? Step 6 Complete the ANOVA table. We're going to take the numbers we just calculated and fill them into our ANOVA table. The table will look like this. It'll have a source of variation column, degrees of freedom, DF, column, sum of squares column, MS column, and finally the F column. We'll label the first one treatment. In this case it might be fertilizer sources, then error term and finally total. That's how we create a skeleton of ANOVA table. We need to figure out the degrees of freedom for our treatments, so let's take a look at our data. We had three treatments, so that leaves us with two degrees of freedom for treatment. For the total degrees of freedom, we started with 12 values, experimental units, and subtract one from that to get 11. Why don't we skip over the error? Just like we did with the sum of squares for error, we'll get this by doing subtraction. If you subtract 2 from 11, you will be left with 9, and that's how you get the error degrees of freedom. Alright, so now for the sum of squares quantity, we can get that from looking back at our data step. That's why we did the data step in the first place. So, we're gonna use the sum of squares for treatment and that value is 300.5. Then, for sum of squares for error, we found that to be 379.5. And lastly, the sum of squares for total is 680, all filled in. Right. Formula for treatment MS is Treatment SS divided by treatment degrees of freedom. Formula for error MS is Error SS divided by error degrees of freedom. We need to fill MS column in. We're looking at the mean square for treatment and the mean square for error. 
To do that, we'll divide the sum square for treatment by its degrees of freedom, 300.5 divided by 2 gives us 150.25. Then, we'll take the sum square for error, 379.5, and divide it by 9 giving us 42.167. From there, what we want to do is calculate F. Formula for F calculated is Treatment MS divided by error MS. These formulas and the logic will remain same for rest of the experimental designs. To do that, we divide the treatment MS by the error MS, so just like you see it in the table, it looks like a fraction right, we're going to divide the bottom into the top to produce the F value, write the bottom into the top to produce the F value, okay? Let's figure out what that works out to be. I get the answer 3.563, which is what you should get if you divide these two. Finally, we now have our test at that F value. What do we do after our test? Step 7. Look up table F values. We take that value and compare it to a critical value. To do that, we look for the F critical value from our F table. First thing we need to do is figure out the alpha for the problem. When you look back at the actual problem itself, it said we had a 5% significance level, so we're going to use alpha as 5%. Okay, so we're going to look at the 0.05 table and how to form a test with it. Remember, an F critical value has a numerator degrees of freedom and a denominator degrees of freedom. The numerator is MS treatment with two degrees of freedom. The denominator is MS error, with 9 degrees of freedom. We'll use those numbers to look up our critical value on the table. We scroll down and find that our critical value is 4.26. When we compare that to our F-test result of 3.563, we fail to reject the null hypothesis because of F calculated is less than F value from the table. So now that we know all three means are equal, we can say that the sources of fertilizer are not significantly different.